Welcome back to Wargaming Shut Up and Jam Guiden. I'm Steve, and here is... I am Mike. And this episode is brought to you by the power of Menoth. All right, so the Menoth Battle Box comes with uh, Malicus the Burning Truth, a Castigator, a Repenter, and a Revenger. So that's two lights, a heavy, and the man himself, uh, Malicus. Who is Fiora's propaganda man. Is he? Yeah. Oh, what a douche. He's all like, fire is cool, fire is great, surrender will as of this date. <laughs> all right. Uh, so let's talk about the, we're going to talk about the lights, then the heavy, then we're going to talk about um, the Warcaster and how he all fits together. Um, the Revenger is your standard kind of sword and board arc note Lancer guy, pretty much. He doesn't have a sword, he has a, a halberd, man. A halberd. You're right. Um, so anyway, he's uh, actually a pretty defensive little piece there. He's uh, 10 points, so it's not terribly expensive. Comes in at armor 17 with a two uh, armor shield. So... Mm-hmm. Um, so he's hitting pretty at uh, arm 19. Yep. Uh, with actually a reasonable amount of damage boxes. So he's pretty sick from that perspective. Um, arc node, which is really sweet because everybody loves an arc node. Sure. I, 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 mean, I just think it's a universal piece in like every kind of collection to I have mean, an arc node. Yeah, it's a good idea to have an arc node. I don't know if it's great in this box, but... Yeah, this box I'm, I'm not certain of, but um, still, I mean, like to, to have one of, it's not so bad. Sure, yeah. Um, so his repulsor shield has repel. So when he hits an enemy model with the shield, which is only one, uh, half inch reach, um, they get pushed one inch directly away from this model. Um, also when he's hit. Also when it. he's hit. Okay. And then he's got the, uh, the halberd, which is, uh, just a standard POW 13 range to attack. And it also gets plus two, uh, to charge attack yeah. rolls with it. Yeah. It's got powerful attack, powerful charge. Um, the shield prevents anything from really making continued attacks on it. The the weird I think the weird thing about him though is like he's an arc node that you kind of also want to use as a jamming piece. You don't really want to use him as a jamming piece. He's not that fast, and the the, sh- the powerful charge is mostly just for like when you're done using him as an arc node. Okay. Like you could you can make a case for both. Like honestly, he's going to be useful for whatever you need him to be useful for. So okay. like if you need him more to jam something, then he can go in and jam something. If you need him more to be an arc node, you can be an arc node. Um, and then we have the Repenter, who is another uh, same. Hi-ya! He's he's the same uh, chassis, right? Sort of. I mean, more or less. A bit, sure. I, th- I think they're all of the the lights are on pretty much the same chassis. Yes, although they like they come with different kits, so it's not like they can. Yeah. Um, so he's got a war flail with a chain a chain weapon. Yep. So that gives him. Uh, it says only one reach one. Uh, it, yeah, it's, it's only reach one. But it uh, gets around the shields. And yeah, it ignores shield shield bon- shield bonuses, buckler bonuses, and a shield wall. Um, I think on a POW 13 attack, that's kind of less spectacular, but I think you're mostly taking him for the flamethrower. You're uh, taking him almost entirely for the flamethrower. Which is uh, rain, or spray 8, POW 12, causes continuous fire, which is... I and mean, causes fire damage. And causes fire damage. Um, that's about it. That's pretty much it, yeah. I mean, uh, otherwise, speed 5 comes in at 8 points, pretty cheap. Burn but like in the countryside. I mean, with... with and all the peasants. With uh, warcasters like Fiora, for example, anybody, anybody in Manoth who, who cares about... Um, or uh, say Malicus. Or say Malicus. Uh, any, any warcaster that cares about um, continuous fire. Repenters are kind of like an auto-include, especially now that they come with a free well, focus. They, I wouldn't say they're in, like an auto-include because there are other options to cause the fire, but they are a fairly good choice for eight points. I mean, I just think that like now that you don't really have to spend any resource to get value out of them, it's nice. I mean, you still... The thing is, that's not true for spray attacks, though. Like, if you're spraying against multiple targets and you need to boost defense, uh, boost a hit for all of them, you need multiple focus for that. Like, you only cause continuous fire on the hit. Yeah, I guess that's true. So, I, I don't think that's any more true than before. Well, I mean, now you get a free focus, so that's... You get a free focus. Sure. We disagree. All right. <laughs> um... Yeah, so I mean that's pretty much it for him. He's really straightforward, like not nothing too fancy. Um, the Castigator I really like. I just think he's a really cool Jack for for the twelve points you're paying for him. Um, so he's a heavy. Right. J- no, he's all right. You don't like him that much? It's it's not that he's bad or anything. It's just like he doesn't really hit that hard. The Castigator still has a bunch of awkward stuff about him. Okay. Well, I mean the thing is, he gets two POW sixteens, causes uh, continuous fire, uh, arm nineteen. Almost full damage boxes, minus less four, so he's like, what? 32. Uh, yeah, 32. Um, Ashen Veil, so living enemy models without immunity to fire suffer minus two attack rolls within two inches of them. That's pretty and sweet. And he has concealment. Woo! 
The okay. problem with that is his defense 10. Yeah, so concealment's not going to matter that much. Well, neither of those things are going to matter that Wait, where much. do you see as concealment? The first line of Ashen Veil. Ah, oh, okay. Concealment. Wow, all right. Um, and then his combustion attack. I mean, when you're dealing with uh, other models within two inches of them. I mean, combustion's sweet when you're playing, like, non-battle box games and you can burn and aid a bunch of things. Although, from my understanding of it, combustion cannot be used on a charge still. Okay. Because it's not a special attack of a melee weapon, it's just a special attack inherent to the model. Oh, interesting. Hmm. I mean, that does limit its its usefulness for sure. Yeah. I mean, it's great if you can get them in against, like, a bunch of infantry and set them all on fire for free. Yeah. Um... Okay, but I mean, at the same time, for 12 points, he's, he's like, cheap. I mean... He's he's more expensive than uh, Crusader. Okay, well, yeah, but I mean, he's he probably also... I mean, he has the, the infantry mashing utility. Yeah, I mean, he's, there's nothing... He's not terrible. He's not bad. Um, and then, of course, we've got... I think the, the, the Menoth box is a little odd in that... Um, well, we've got Malachus here, and he's... Um, also has Ashen Veil, um, so he's got Consumer, but he actually has Defense 14, so that could matter. Yeah, for him it matters a lot more. Um, he's got Spray 10, POW 13, uh, Light You on Fire. Yeah. Ness. Yeah. Which is really cool. His melee attack causes a continuous fire, although I don't know that you really want him stuck in melee, but that's fine. And then he's got Spells. So, uh, Banishing Ward. That's yeah. pretty nice. It's all right. Well, I mean, Menoth gets it. I mean, other people get Banishing Ward, too. Like, Yeah, I guess it, they just don't get uh, Purification, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <coughs> sorry. Um, immolation causes f uh, fire damage and a crit hit. Continuous fire. Only costs two, so we can sh shoot that out a few times, especially through the uh, Arc Node. That's not so bad. All right. Um, ignite. So target-friendly faction model slash unit gains plus two to melee attack damage rolls. Uh, faction models gain crit, crit fire on their uh, melee attacks. Open fire. Target war deck in this model's battle group that is in its control range can immediately make one basic melee or range attack model that uh, can be targeted by open fire only once per turn. And Scourge, uh, extremely expensive POW-13 AOE-3 that get, knocks down people. Yeah. Um, I'm not super impressed with this spell list. I think that his spell list is fine. It's just not really great with the battle box. Okay, fair. Like, open fire is just, like, it's just a pretty good attack, like, pretty good spell. It's just, it's better if you're making a Vanquisher shoot another time, or making, you know, something that hits really, really hard. I hit mean, once more. Ignite is nice, but I mean... I mean, Ignite is plus two to damage. It's, you throw it up on the, uh, the, the, the Castigator, and yeah. it hits at PS18. It's, it's fine. That's respectable. Um, but I mean, the thing is, if you were to throw it up on, like, the new Cinerators, for example... Like, they're then swinging in at POW 15s. Um, I mean, it's good on anything. With Reach and Weapon Master. Ignite's good on anything that you want to put in melee. Like That's true. I mean, it's pretty universal. Um, yeah, Open Fire. I mean, again, like I think that um, in this case, maybe the, um, the Crusader would be a better bet for him than the... I mean, I guess he, he really just doesn't need the, the points so much, but... Um, if you were to take out the Castigator and one of the lights, you could probably put in Double Crusader. Whether or not you would want to, I don't know. Yeah, but I like, mean, maybe. It, like, it's... It's fine. Like... And, uh, let's see. Feet. Raging Inferno. When enemy model suffers a fire damage roll while in Malika's control range, add an additional die to the damage roll. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, additionally, fire continuous effects uh, that affect enemy models in his control range cannot expire less for one round. So I think his feet's fantastic. Um, if you can get enough fire out there. Um, well, I mean, his feet is pretty good in the right circumstances. Like, well, because you're like POW 12, three dice, pretty, pretty sweet. Yeah, that's, that's just continuous fire though. Like it adds an additional die to his flamethrower's damage, his repenter's flamethrower's uh, yeah, damage, yeah. and that can be boosted on top. Oh, wow. Okay. So, so you can, you can like, you, th you throw up the feet first and then you throw out a, a spray 10 with POW 13, additional die on everything. And then you can boost the damage on, you know, their Warcaster. I mean, that's starting to make more sense in terms of, like, why they included the Castigator, I suppose. Um, well, not really, because the Castigator doesn't do fire damage with his melee attacks. Well, but, I mean, okay, so in this case, um, you would probably toss uh, Ignite up on the Castigator. Sure. Oh, no, I guess that doesn't even give it fire. No, it doesn't. They, I what mean, the, cast know? the Castigator is on theme because, like, you hit stuff with them and they light on fire so that... 
the feet makes the fire do more damage. Yeah, but I mean, it's less overtly powerful than like. Well, no, sure, but like if you if you're just like if you leave a, a heavy or a warcaster on like a few boxes and you've lit it on fire because of the castigator. Yeah, fair. Then it's taking a you know a pow twelve with the extra die. But what about something? I mean, like you know, you think about like the fire of salvation. It's another caster's character, Jack. So? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not saying that it doesn't work with him. I'm just saying it's not likely to, that they would... They, they don't put character jacks in the battle boxes, for starters. That's true. Um, I'm a, I mean, I like I like Malachus. I think that, like, he takes a little bit more of a specialized list than um, some of the other casters in Menoth because, again, he wants a lot of things that have inherent fire damage. Yeah, sure. I don't know about hit this battle box, though, like, in terms of the stuff that it actually comes with. It seems a little clunky. It, it is a little clunky. I think it's fine overall. I, like, I don't think it's... I think a lot of people probably underestimate the amount of damage that he can put out on feet turn. Maybe. Because, um, like, even just himself, right? Like, even if your opponent's caster is behind a heavy, you can still spray to them because of his stupid shit. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> his stupid shit, of course, being a spray attack and an arc node. But, like, you throw up feet, you spray... You so immolate a few times. Yeah. And, and like you just you start pumping out significant damage, and then you know your castigator charges for free or whatever, and your repenter gets to go with his fire. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's exactly the sound effect it makes. It is, it is. Um I, I like I don't think he's bad. I just think that he's he's definitely more circumstantial, I guess. Is the word I'm looking for, maybe? Then I mean, fire burns everybody. Fi- well, not true. Fire unless, doesn't burn him. Unless you're immune to fire, it burns you. <laughs> Seems solid to me. And the thing is, you can't really ignore open fire. Like, Menoth lost vassals. That's true. But open fire letting you basically vassal three warjacks if you feel like it. He has two upkeeps, so... Oh, that's a good if, point. I mean, I, I don't really count Vanishing Ward because it's stupid. But, um... Like, really, like, you could just open fire with three Vanquishers. You make a good point, actually. Pop um, feet so that the fire can't go out. Yeah. Actually, that, that, that could be pretty fun. Kills every infantry model your opponent has. And then some. Um, that's actually a really good point. I, I didn't think about that. Um, because if you even if you... Like, let's say you just had two Vanquishers. Yeah. You're still getting those four... Four shots. Pow, or, uh, pie plates of yeah. light you on fire. Um, they're not terribly expensive. And that can cause some significant damage. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that, that's a really good use for them. That's pretty much it for our discussion on this. We're going to uh, immediately go to the unboxing... So, hang tight. It should be here now. Woo! So, let's take a look what's inside. So, of course, we've got our Prime Rules Digest. So, Digest Size Rulebook. The rules. Ooh, the pages are still, like, crinkled together because they're die cut, right? Um, I don't know if they're die cut. Anyway, so it comes with a colored rulebook, which is nice. Um, Very much in the same vein as the the Mark II ones. It comes with our 18-inch ruler of war machine this is a uh, like a laminated paper or like a glossy paper it's not going to stand up to a lot of use but it it'll get you by for it initially we've got our protectorate of menoth introductory guide which these are actually pretty awesome um so we've got fires of truth a short story by william schick um the first like five or six pages um it goes on to tell you about uh Battle group tactics, so just how to use the initial models that come with it. Whether or not I agree with it, I don't know, but still. Uh, Expanded options and growing your force gives you some suggestions on purchases, although we are going to do a video series um, expanding this box out to other stuff, so um, you should trust us. So throw this away. Don't throw this away. There's some good information here. Um, Some propaganda. Um, Now, some basic hobby stuff. If you've never done any kind of hobbying, you know, just here's how to clip stuff. Here's how to use a knife. Don't cut yourself. Important things like that. Um, and most importantly, it actually tells you how they got the results that they did with the color scheme. So if you want to, um, you want to paint them exactly like the, the box art, you can, um, with, with little information, right? Like you can just actually follow their steps and you'll get something that looks relatively close. The, the step they did to include in the guide is get good at painting. Well, it takes practice, but that's fine. So, um, actually a valuable inclusion. I thought that this was going to be a throwaway thing. Like I thought that it was, eh, fuck it. Um, but I was wrong. So, that's right, it happens. Um, our, our mat, on the one side you've got um, sort of positions marked off for um, the introductory guide, which we'll get to. And on the other side you just have like a clear mat so you can play with your friends with the battle box size. And this is a two by two foot mat. Um, 
surprisingly high quality for what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's pretty sweet. Basic training. Bam. So this is this is your basic rules, how to. Um, the, the full rule, rule book gives you all of the rules, but um, this gets you sort of this is your initiated. Play. Exactly. Your play um, guide. And it's actually really well detailed. There's like six missions that you can follow along with and... Um, Actually, look closer. And there's templates on the front page you can cut out. There's templates you can cut out, or I mean, even just photocopy this page. I'm pretty sure that's allowed. Photocopy these templates for your personal use. That's right. Um, so it actually also has a, a wall template um, in addition to the card template that you'll get as well. Because that's the actual size wall template. Yeah, the other one's three and a half inches, so. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it goes over like a lot of the, the basic mechanics of the game. And once you've kind of mastered this, you can move on to a full size game and it would be an easy transition or a relatively easy transition. Um, so that's really cool. And then, yeah, there's nine, 10. Okay. There was more missions than I thought. 11 missions. Um, and then these missions can be played with these cards, uh, just to give you, you a sense of how the game's supposed to work. Learn to play noob. Exactly. Um, so also not a useless addition. I thought this, most of this stuff was going to be like pull it out of the box, throw it into a fire heap. Well, it's not useless for new players, at least. That's true. It's intended audience. Um, so that's really awesome. I see that we seem to have four miniatures with this box. That's fantastic. Um, so for those of you that didn't know, we uh, we got shorted on our, our Signar all-in-one box. Or sorry, Signar battle box. Uh, where we're missing Miss or Mrs. I'm not sure if she married Beth Maddox. Major. Major. Um, the title is not dependent on her gender, Steve. Major. Hair flip. Fuck you. Anyway, um, so we've got... Well, let's uh, let's take a look at the generic stuff. Dice! Tokens. And these are actually uh, hard plastic tokens, the same as you would buy with um, your various factions. Comes with ten focus and three spell tokens. The tokens. So, I mean, that's fantastic. This... This was one of my big complaints with the uh, when we started. Um, I'm like, they should give you something like this so you can just keep track because well, it's so didn't, important. They didn't give any like they didn't give you dice. They didn't give you rules. They didn't yeah. give you. But I mean, basically well, anything. Basically like, anything. Exactly. Like this is just an amazing way to start the game. Um, yeah, we've got our cards. Bam. Now the back card um, that's inside of this is actually your wall. your wall to- or template. So you your can wall. take that out. Um, fold it into a, a wall and that's what you're meant to use um, for for at least the demo stuff. And then we've got the models. So. All in this nice uh, cream colored plastic. Yeah, this actually, this color is actually a lot nicer than I thought it was. Custard. Um, so uh, the, the purpose of the colored plastic is just so that you can identify at a glance which models are yours unless you're playing in a mirror match in which case. In which case, what the fuck are you doing? Mirror matches are for lamers. Well, what if every, different factions. Let's be fair. What if everybody wants to play circle? I, can you really, no, no, can you really no, blame you, him? You fucking Rochambeau. The fucking winner gets to play circle. <laughs> Everyone else gets to do whatever the fuck they want elsewhere. Yeah. Winner gets to play play circle. The loser gets to play Signar with no Beth Maddox. Uh. You can't play <laughs> a game with no Warcaster. So anyway. Because this is, you can't lose then, man. There we go. Um, well, you can't win. I mean, either way. I forgot his name. Malicus, the Burning Truth. There we go. Thank you. That's the Revenger. Uh, yeah. I was, I was checking. So Malicus is right there. Um... High quality sculpt, not that much flash, and uh, the colored plastic is a really nice model. Kind of tubby, but no, he, not, he, he, Malicus is kind of tubby. That's true. He's just he's got he's got uh he's got it all though. Uh, this is our Revenger, I believe. Yes, the one the the shield pole arm. Yeah, yeah, pole arm shield. Revenger. Um, Malicus reminds me of another thing from something, but I can't put my finger on it right now. Here's our Castigator. Which actually we're gonna pop open because it's really hard to tell um, at a quick glance. Castigating the countryside, castigating all the peasants. I think it's interesting that this one comes in the box just because it's an unusual model. Like, um, you don't see a lot of castigators no, kicking around. Most people don't have it. Well, there's that too. Also, it lights things on fire, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so here is the body for the castigator. I think it's, I think it's probably the, the most consistently light things on fire heavy that is melee. Yeah, I, I like the the big like fiery fists it of looks doom. Really cool. I, like, I love the model. The, the flamethrower fists are pretty fucking badass. And I mean, truly, if you get it into position where you can use combustion, it's pretty sweet. Well, exactly. Um, takes a little finagling, but that's fine. 
It's uh, also on the the Minoth chassis, so it's the like the faster of the Jack chassis that Minoth, Minoth has access to. His head is in here. I'm not going to take that out because I'll probably lose it. The fuck? Yeah, his head and his uh, little coif, like the the thing that. Oh, uh, I was looking at. See, see, I was looking at that thing that was positioned above his head, and I thought that was part of his head. Oh, and no. Had, like this big fucking weird arc on top of his head. I was very yeah, confused I for think, a second. I think those are for... It's the, the cowl. It's like it's going to go here. Yeah, yeah, that part. But the the little... Uh, these, I think, are arm bits. I don't fucking know. Sure. They're whatever they feel like. Yeah, I think... Oh, yeah. So these plug into here. This In your in your arms. And then they, um, they connect to the actual jack. And then these... The tubing all pumps into the back of them. Yeah, there's even there's spots for the tubing. Yeah, so that's the castigator. And this is, I believe, the repenter. Yep. Also a burninator. Burninator of dudes. And he is... Well, I've seen the model before, but you guys may not have. Flamethrower ring. I don't, he's got a bunch of little parts. Um, the nice thing about these kits, actually, is that because you don't get... Um, all the extra other parts. You cannot misbuild these if you build them one at a time. Right. Um, if you just like open all the packages and dump them into a pile, well... I'm going to build a fucking Frankenjack. Frankenjack. You don't want to continue that? Not really. All right. Um, so this is the Protector of Menoth Battle Group Battle Box Unboxing Box Box. It came with a Warcaster. It came with a Warcaster. That's Woo! impressive. Um, Shouldn't be. Still, I mean, this is just a phenomenal way to start the game. By far the best, bestiest way of starting the game. Except maybe the two-player starter. Oh, which aren't out yet, but yeah. I mean, the, the two-player starter box. But the thing is, that only comes with one rule box. One rule book, so. There we go. Um, I don't know. I'll give this uh, 9 out of 10 fiery tokens. Mm, you're an infidel now because you didn't give it 10 out of 10 or 10 out of 5. Wow, that's true. Steve's going to be burned at the stake. I'll give it a perfect five out of seven. What witch. do you think? You're a witch. That's not true. I don't weigh the same as a duck. How do we know? Ah. Uh, anyway. Burn the witch. Uh, if you're interested in Menoth or want to, you know, purify the heretics, this is definitely the best way to go about it. With fire. And if you already have all this stuff, then you probably don't need this box. Disclaimer. Please do not apply actual fire to miniatures. Yeah, not a great idea. Um, so thank you for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends, and uh, drop us a comment. Tell us about um, your Menothy experiences. And please put in the comments how many times you murder your enemy warcaster by burning them to death. That's true. I was. Fire. I think. I mean, in the, in the discussion, I was pretty hard on. Uh, yeah, because you're on this guy. like, oh, I don't like him because he's fat. I'm a body. Shaming. <laughs> yeah, that's that's I'm, what I'm, I said. I'm body shaming. My name is Steve. Obviously, um, I was. Yeah, I was a little hard on him, but. I, I, I went back over the cards, like I was looking at them last night, and um, I think there's a lot of potential for this box. I just uh, sure I'm gonna I'm gonna want to get him uh, integrated with the the collection that I have for Menoth and and uh, start coming up. I'm, I'm gonna cook with fire. Come check out the Connection Games and Comics. We have the largest selection of War Machine and Horde miniatures in the Lower Mainland. War Machine Wednesdays and Sundays with tables and terrain to play your game.